Okay. So now last talk in this session is refined cryptanalysis of GPRS ciphers GEA1 and GEA2 by Itai Dinur and Dor Amja Lake. And Itai will present this paper. Okay, thank you uh, very much for the introduction. I hope that you can hear me well. So uh, this uh, talk is about the GEA1 and GEA2 uh, ciphers. Uh, that were used in the uh, GPRS. So uh, GPRS is a, a mobile data standard, was used to encrypt uh, data. Uh, it was widely deployed in the early uh, 2000s. And uh, encryption uh, was used uh, to protect against uh, eavesdropping on the, uh, on the communication. And uh, initially, uh, GPRS used the two proprietary screen ciphers named uh, GEA1 and GEA2. Now, at, uh, last year at Eurocrat, a very nice paper uh, by eight authors that are uh, given here. Um, so it presented the, the first public analysis of the ciphers uh, GA1 and GA2. And in fact, uh, this paper actually uh, uh, first disclosed uh, the specification uh, of the ciphers. So I'm going to call this paper in short, uh, BDL from uh, now on. So uh, um, GA1 and GA2 uh, both have a 64 uh, bit session keys. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the previous Eurocurve paper uh, described the weakness that allows to uh, recover the session key of a GA1 and time complexity uh, only two to the 40, given uh, roughly 44 gigabytes uh, of uh, memory. Now the attack only required uh, 65 bits of known key stream that uh, can typically be obtained just by uh, knowing some uh, fixed headers. So the attack is kind of practical. Um, it's really practical. It was actually implemented. And uh, um, however, it requires kind of a large amount of memory. So uh, um, the attack is based on the weakness uh, that uh, was believe, is believed to be intentional. And uh, the weakness is probably due to some export regulations that were uh, in place at the time that the cipher was designed. Now, the uh, use of GA1 was already uh, prohibited back in 2013, uh, but kind of uh, surprisingly, uh, BDL noticed that uh, modern mobile phones still supported the, the cipher GA1 and this uh, could, uh, um, could actually lead to some uh, downgrade attacks. Uh, uh, so it could uh, um, have an actual uh, impact in practice, uh, but this defect is, uh, is now uh, supp supposedly uh, fixed uh, by some uh, removing, uh, actually verifying that the GA1 is no longer supported. Now for GA2, uh, so GA2 does not have, a, as far as we know, a significant weakness as a, uh, GA1. Uh, however, um, the authors still uh, describe an attack on a cipher with time complexity uh, 2 to the 45. Uh, but the main uh, kind of uh, practical obstacle in this attack is that it requires uh, 12... Uh, 1,800 uh, keystream bits, uh, the knowledge of them in order to, uh, that are used to encrypt uh, the full GPRS frame. So this attack is kind of, uh, th this kind of limits the practical, the practicality uh, of, uh, of this attack. And uh, therefore uh, the previous paper also presented the data time uh, trade-off uh, that uh, uh, beats exhaustive search, but only given at least uh, 1,400 uh, bits of known key screen. Okay, so that was the previous paper. Now, now let's, uh, let's uh, move uh, to our results. So basically what we do in the, in the paper is uh, describe uh, improved and uh, refined attacks uh, compared to the previous Hewlett uh, paper. So for GA1, uh, we reduce the memory complexity uh, by a factor of roughly 8,000, a bit more from 44 gigabytes to about four megabytes, uh, while uh, the time complexity remains about two to the 40. 
so we implemented the attack and the attack uh, runs on a standard laptop in roughly two and a half hours. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the previous paper, uh, previous authors ran, run the attack on a cluster probably due to the high memory complexity. It's not trivial to implement this on a standard laptop, the previous attack at least. So uh, before moving on to GA2, I want to just stress the motivation in improving this attack. So in the early 2000s, uh, high memory complexity such as the previous attack was actually not uh, obvious to implement, uh, especially if you want to, uh, uh, to run this attack, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, eavesdropping to multiple sessions and you want to uh, implement this attack at scale. So it's not obvious how to do it. I mean, it's not obvious that uh, you need a lot of resources to do it with a lot of memory. Um, and, and another uh, motivation, and I should say this is a general motivation for this work, is to better understand the security of ciphers that were at least once uh, widely uh, used. Okay, so that's for GA1. Um, and for GA2, uh, we actually present two attacks. So in this talk, I'll only uh, focus on uh, just one attack. Uh, the first attack, so uh, we improved the data time trade-off uh, presented in the previous papers, but uh, the improvement is only up to uh, seven, given 7,000 uh, bits of uh, uh, consecutive uh, key string. That's what we assume about the data complexity. And uh, uh, the techniques that we use, uh, as we will see, is, uh, is, are borrowed from uh, techniques for solving uh, cakes or problems. Okay, so first uh, I'll focus on the GA1 attack. Uh, but before describing the attack, then let's see how uh, the ciphers actually works. So um, I'll start by describing the initialization uh, process. So uh, this process takes as input the 64-bit session key and 32-bit uh, IV. And uh, first, this, uh, these inputs are used to compute the 64-bit seed. It's not very important how, how it's done. And then uh, in the second step of the initialization, the seed is used to initialize the 96-bit uh, initial state. Uh, of GA1, which is composed of three LFSRs, A, B, and C, of uh, sizes 31, 32, and 33 bits. Okay, as you can see here. And the, the snapping from the seed to a 96-bit state is, uh, is, uh, is uh, we will denote it by M, and uh, it should be mentioned, I, I will mention that M is, is actually a linear function. Okay, so that's the initialization. And after the initialization, the cipher is, uh, is ready to produce a key stream or to encrypt. So how do we do this? Um, so um, before actually describe to you how to do this, then let's uh, fix some notation. So, uh, so given some internal state uh, A of this first uh, LFSR, um, I'm going to denote uh, FA uh, applied to this uh, internal state uh, indexed by, uh, by an integer tau. It's going to be uh, just the function that computes the next uh, tau output bits from the uh, internal state, uh, A underscore. And how is it, it is done? Basically, we have a tau uh, iterations, and in each iteration, we apply some function, output function to the internal state. It's not very important what is this function, it just produces the next output bit. Then we clock the LFSR to, uh, uh, to obtain the next. Uh, internal state, and we have tau of these iterations that produce the tau output bits. Okay, so now let's understand how the key stream is uh, generated. So basically, um, the inputs to the key stream generation are the 96 uh, bit of the uh, initial state, ABC, and a 12,800 bit packet, which we denote by P. And uh, basically what we do is uh, just uh, produce uh, 12,800 uh, uh, bits of key stream just by storing the outputs of these uh, three registers. And the ciphertext is just uh, the XOR of the key stream with the plain text. Okay, of course you do this bit by bit, but in general, it doesn't really matter. You produce key stream and then uh, you store it with the plain text to uh, output uh, the, cipher, the cipher text. Okay, so now that we understand how the uh, GA1 uh, works, uh, let's, uh, let's understand, uh, let's think about how to break it. So uh, the attacker, what we assume is that it, uh, the attacker obtained 65 uh, bits of a uh, known uh, key stream, which will uh, denote by, uh, uh, by Z. 
uh, for some packet. Uh, so how do we obtain this actually this key stream? In practice, what we need to do is to actually eavesdrop to get the ciphertext. Okay, it's eavesdrop to the communication. And we also need to assume that we know the corresponding uh, plain text that was used uh, in the encryption. And, and 65 bits of keystream uh, is not uh, typically difficult to, uh, to, uh, to actually guess or know because uh, you can guess it from some known and fixed headers. Okay, and then uh, the keystream is just the sort of the plain text and the ciphertext. Okay, so uh, we assume that we have the 65-bit keystream, uh, and now the, the goal of the attack is to run some uh, uh, state recovery attack and to recover the initial state uh, ABC of the registers. And now given the initial state, uh, the attacker can actually invert the initialization process of, uh, of GA1 and obtain the seed uh, used to produce the states, and, and from this, it can actually uh, uh, go backwards and obtain the session key. I'm not going to describe how to do this. This is actually described in the BDL paper, but it's kind of simple. Okay, and given the session key, you can actually, uh, con by continuing to eavesdrop, you can actually decrypt the full GPR session, so you have uh, all the communication. So now the goal is basically uh, to uh, right to focus here on the, on this step. How how do we recover the initial state given uh, the history? So let's uh, see how to do this. Uh, and before we see the attack, let's describe the the actual weakness that uh, was used to uh, uh, that was uh, described in this uh, BDL paper. So uh, the weakness is actually a weakness in the initialization process of uh, uh, GA one. Uh, in the second step of this uh, in the initialization step that maps a 64 uh, bit set to a 96 uh, bit uh, state by uh, this uh, this mapping m and uh, specifically let's focus on the internal states of a and c so it turns out that the joint internal states of a and c which are 64 bits they can actually assume or obtain only 2 to the 40 uh, values out of the two to the 64 possible values. Okay, so uh, that's kind of uh, interesting. Um, and equivalently, this means that the dimension of the image of this mapping, M, this linear mapping, uh, uh, when uh, projected to the registers A and C is only 40 out of uh, 64, uh, which in, can theoretically be. Okay, now given this, let's see how to, uh, to break the cipher uh, uh, more efficiently than uh, just exhaustive search. So uh, in the attack, what we do is we search for internal states A, B, and C uh, that actually produce the given keystream Z uh, as in this equation. And in order to do this, we will split the attack into uh, the equation into two parts. Uh, so the right part uh, only contains the internal states B and the left part only contains uh, internal states of A and C. So how does the attack work? We first focus on the right-hand side here. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a table, which we call TB for the function FB. And it's done as follows. So for each uh, value of the internal state B, so we have two to 32 such values, we're going to produce output, 65 bits of output, and we're going to store all the, uh, all the states and the, the outputs in some table, uh, which will denote by TB. And it's of size uh, 2 to the 32. Okay, that's the right-hand side. And next we focus on the uh, left-hand side. So for each A and C and the image uh, of M projected to A and C, we know that we have only 2 to the 40 such uh, uh, joint states. Uh, then we compute the left-hand side here, and we search it in the table, TB, that we prepared for the right-hand side. Okay, and uh, basically each match gives you a candidate for uh, the internal state. And uh, because we are using 64 five bits here, then essentially you can do some calculation and show that we expect to, to actually only output the, the right internal states if, this, if everything is done correctly. Okay, so um, the complexity of this attack is basically dominated by uh, the, this uh, second step because we only have two to the 40 uh, joint AC states and the image. And the memory complexity is dominated by the stable TB, uh, which uh, is of size to the 32 words, or if you do the calculations, 44 gigabytes. Now the goal, of course, uh, our goal in the, in the paper is actually to reduce the space uh, to roughly two to the 19 words or four megabytes. 
So how do we do this? So here's an additional observation. It was actually already made in the previous paper. Um, so let's look at the dimension of M, uh, of this linear mapping. Of course, it maps a 64-bit uh, seed, so it, it's only 64. And uh, on the other hand, let's look at, let's look at the uh, dimension of the image of M uh, projected to AC, which uh, it's 40. The dimension of the image of M projected to B, it's 32. So they sum up to 72. So you can see that there is a gap here of eight. And this gap basically means that there is a shared subspace between uh, kind of between uh, this and this subspace, both uh, these images uh, of dimension uh, 72 uh, minus 64, which is eight. Okay, and uh, using this kind of shared subspace, you can uh, actually uh, decompose the images of MAB and uh, MAC into this shared uh, subspace, uh, let's call it UB, uh, projected, I mean, this shared subspace projected to be XOR some uh, direct sum with some uh, other subspace of smaller dimension, dimension only 24. Okay, and you can do a similar thing uh, for uh, uh, MAC. Okay, yeah, you can decompose it similarly. And uh, we're going to exploit this uh, actually to reduce the memory. It was exploited previously in order to obtain more filtering conditions for the attack, but here we'll use a a relatively standard trick to uh, reduce the memory complexity of the attack. So how does it work? Uh, basically, um, we have the shared subspace. And in general, if there is a common part between the two sides of the mid and the middle attack, which is basically the shared subspace, then it can be used to partition the large mid and the middle attack into smaller attacks. Uh, each of these uh, uh, smaller uh, attacks uh, requires smaller memory uh, because we kind of uh, can reuse uh, the memory for uh, each attack. So let's see how this is done. Uh, so uh, specifically, uh, we have uh, we'll have an outer loop that uh, iterates over all uh, uh, elements of the shared subspace. And now for the first uh, part of the attack. Uh, so um, it's, uh, instead of just uh, iterating over all these, we it need to iterate now uh, given this U, we need to only iterate over the remaining uh, elements of V1. And there are only two to the 24. And uh, for each one of them, we compute the internal state according to kind of this equation uh, of B. And then we put, uh, compute the output and we store it in table PB. Of course, it's a small table because we're only iterating over the, this V1 space. So the table is only of side two to the 24 for each uh, iteration. And uh, similarly, uh, we do the same thing for the second uh, part of the attack. We, we need to iterate only over this V2 space, compute the joint AC uh, uh, state, uh, compute the left-hand side of the uh, equation, search it in TB, and so forth. Okay, so that, that's basically how the, uh, how the improved uh, attack works. And uh, the complexity here, well, the time complexity remains the same. Uh, we didn't do anything uh, too special uh, to optimize time complexity. However, the space complexity is reduced to two to the 24. Uh, just because uh, the smaller tables to be here uh, only require two to the 24 uh, words, which is the, basically the dimension of uh, V1. Okay, so the memory complexity is now reduced to, to uh, 56 megabytes roughly. However, uh, if you remember correctly, we want to reduce it to four megabytes. So we're still missing something. Okay, so how can we reduce the memory further? And the main observation here uh, is to notice that the steps, uh, if you look at this attack, the steps are actually not balanced. Um, the first step, uh, it requires relatively small amount of time, but a large amount of memory to build this uh, table PB. And the second uh, uh, step requires a relatively large amount of uh, time, but a small amount of space. So we can try to kind of balance the, the steps of the attack. And the idea is to use a technique called clamping through pre-computation that is uh, uh, typically used uh, to uh, so uh, to, to solve uh, in uh, to solve the cake store problem. The general idea is, is as follows: We're going to add an additional condition to this loop. Okay, so let's assume that we just fix some five-bit string. Uh, let's call it uh, t. Just five bits. It's uh, just a magical parameter here. Um, so we'll have uh, more loops here, but uh, um, for each uh, for each loop, what we do is we're going to store. 
um, we're going to store uh, FB, we're going to store this internal state only if it produces this, uh, spe this special output prefix. So we add another condition, another five bit condition. And uh, because, this, uh, because of this, we're actually uh, right, storing less, uh, less elements in the table by a factor of two to the five. So uh, the tables will be smaller. That kind of makes sense. Okay, and this is basically how the attack works. So we add this uh, condition. We of, of course need to iterate over all uh, over all output prefixes, and now we uh, we're storing in the table only uh, kind of uh, output prefixes that uh, uh, only sorry internal states that actually uh, uh, produce this output prefix. Okay, so uh, the space is indeed in, in, uh, reduced like what, what we want to uh, four megabytes. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Um, so that that works. Uh, we it did reduce the space. Unfortunately, uh, we did not optimize the second step. So the second step was uh, the bottleneck in terms of time complexity, and we did not optimize it. And therefore, because we have more uh, loops here, we have 32 uh, uh, factor. We increased the number of loops by a factor of uh, 32 or two to the five. That overall time complexity will be increased from two to the 40 to two to the 45. So we kind of have to. Uh, Optimize the second step in order to uh, to actually uh, reduce the time complexity back to two to the forty. Now it's not trivial how to do this. Uh, actually, if you uh, kind of try to look into the details, it's it's actually not obvious uh, if you can that you can do this at all. It turns out that you can do this. Uh, you can implement the step in the second step in reduce time complexity. So I'm not going to describe to you how to do this. The details are in the paper. But I will mention the main observation uh, used to uh, reduce the time complexity. The main observation is that, is that the output function of A restricted to, uh, to five bits, it only depends on 26 bits out of the uh, 31 of the, uh, of the internal state A. Okay, and then we have a similar like a slow diffusion property for C. And you can uh, use these properties actually to optimize uh, this uh, second step. So the details are a bit too technical to describe in this talk, but uh, uh, please look at, at the paper uh, to, uh, to understand better. So this uh, will give us the time complexity uh, two to the 40 and the space complexity is like uh, now really small uh, for megabytes, so it actually fits into cache. Okay, so that's uh, the details about the GA1 attack. Uh, let's uh, move uh, quickly to the GA2 attack and then I'll conclude. So uh, uh, recall that GA2 does not have a significant weakness as a GA1, uh, but the previous paper still described an attack on it uh, with that. Uh, um, and the attack is, is faster than uh, the uh, exhaustive search only from kind of uh, 1,400 uh, keystream bits. So this is kind of the data time uh, trade-off and the attack only bits uh, exhaustive search kind of from this point. Uh, Moving to the right. Uh, so uh, we describe a different attack that improves the previous attack, uh, given the, assuming that we have uh, less uh, history bits, uh, at most uh, 7,000. So you can uh, imagine that this, uh, I mean, it's probably easier to obtain a, a limit, a more limited attack amount of data. So in some sense, it's it's uh, uh, you can say it's more practical for this uh, this region of the, of data. And uh, you can see the uh, kind of the points that we get uh, here. Uh, so specifically, if we, we can focus on this point here, so uh, given uh, 1,100 bits of available key screen, the time complexity that we get is two to the 54. Whereas previously, the best known attack was exhaustive search of two to the 64. So we improve it by a factor of two to the 10. So I should mention that this attack is actually a generic attack. It uh, applies to all uh, screen cipher combiners, uh, uh, as uh, we will see shortly. Okay, so that's an overview of the attack. Now let's, uh, I won't go into many details in this attack, but let's uh, kind of see how, uh, flavor of how it works. So I'll begin by describing the structure of the GA2 ciphers, cipher. So uh, during an initialization, a 64-bit uh, session key um, and uh, 32-bit IV, uh, as in uh, GA1, uh, there are the inputs, but now they are mapped into a larger state, uh, ABCD, with four registers. 
so we have an additional register D of, uh, of size of 29 bits, and this gives a total size of the internal state of uh, 125 bits, and not 96 bits like in GA1. Okay, so the details of the initialization are, are actually not important for this attack. Okay, and the key stream is basically generated in a similar way uh, to GAA1, just that we need to sort the outputs of four registers instead of uh, two. Basically, everything remains similar. Okay, so now moving on to the attack. So we uh, assume for simplicity uh, that the length of all registers is 32 bits. They're kind of close to that, uh, but let's assume that they're all 32 bits for simplicity. Uh, now the attack uh, is going to recover the initial state given uh, the initial state given L uh, known key stream bits. Uh, so like in the case of GA1 from this initial state, you can uh, actually compute the session key and, uh, uh, and uh, decrypt the entire GPRS session. So again, the focus here is on state recovery. Okay, so let's first assume that we're given uh, uh, just 128 output bits of the cycle. Okay, so we assume we are given Z. Uh, this is the key stream of uh, length 128. And again, we're trying to mount a state recovery attack. So we're looking for internal state ABCD such that uh, that produces this uh, uh, key stream Z. And once again, we can split this equation into two parts, a part that involves only A and B and this, the right part involves only C and D. And because uh, kind of each part has two to the 64 state, then a standard bit in the middle attack uh, will give you time complexity two to the 64 and space complexity also two to the 64. Okay, um, now we can actually improve the memory complexity based on the classical Chappelle and Shamir algorithm for subset sum. Subset sum. So um, the idea um, is as follows. So uh, first, if, uh, uh, if this equation holds for uh, states A, B, C, and D, then uh, once again, we kind of partition it in, into two parts, but the idea is now to enumerate over 32-bit uh, values T of uh, each side of the equation kind of uh, independently. And this allows us to split the four XOR problem here into two, two XOR problems, and each one uh, will be solved using a meet in the middle attack, but it will operate on a smaller uh, table. Okay, so specifically, let's fix some 32-bit value here. Once again, 32 bits is, is kind of a magical parameter here used to optimize the complexity. Okay, so let's fix some 32-bit uh, value here for each side. And then what we'll do by a meter in middle attack, so we can compute all uh, internal states A and B that uh, actually satisfy this left-hand side, and we'll store all these internal states in table TAB, and if you do the calculation, the size of the table will be two to the 32. Okay, so that's the left-hand side here. And the right-hand side, you do a similar thing. Okay, you compute all of CD states that satisfy the right-hand side and store them in a table uh, TCD. And then you merge uh, these two, ta uh, two tables according to the full equation here. Okay, and the full, uh, full number of bits. Okay, so that, that's basically the attack. And if you do the analysis, then the sizes of TAB and TCD are each two to the 32. So the st space complexity is indeed two to the 32 because uh, we're reusing the space across iterations. And the time complexity, we have uh, two to the 32 iterations. Each one of them takes two to the 32 times. So the time complexity remains two to the 64 as in the previous second. Okay, but remember that our goal is actually to improve the time complexity and uh, using more uh, uh, larger uh, key stream. So let's see how to do this. Um, so we have an attack with uh, 128 bits uh, of key stream uh, with time complexity two to the 64. So how can we optimize it given a larger amount of key stream? So the idea is to kind of artificially create multiple solutions for uh, the attack for the uh, for uh, uh, that th that actually solved the problem. So what is the solution here? What what are we searching for? We're uh, we're looking for an internal state A B C D at at some uh, and and the the thing is is that uh, um, we don't actually need to recover the only the internal state. We can actually recover some internal state at some clock C. So if we kind of try to focus 
to recover one, some internal state that is used in the computation of the key stream, then, then we, can, we may have multiple solutions uh, that we can uh, work with. And once we recover one of them, then the attack will actually work. Okay, so assume that we actually can do this, that we can actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, obtain some or in some way multiple solutions. Then we can actually uh, mount a more efficient, uh, uh, more efficient attack. And how this is done? Uh, so if we look back at the previous attack, so now assume that there are actually uh, R solutions, meaning our good A, B, C, D states that actually uh, produce. Uh, uh, there are actually solutions to this problem. So assuming that we have our solutions, meaning that we have uh, basically our good values of T, so we actually need to iterate uh, only uh, over roughly two to the 32 divided by our values of T, because uh, we, we just need to find one out of our solutions. So on average, we need to iterate only two to the 32 divided by our values of T. And then the complexity of the attack drops by a factor of R. So it will become two to the 32 divided by R. Okay, and this, of course, assuming assume that we can actually obtain this uh, magic uh, uh, solutions, uh, our solutions. So how can we actually do this? So how do we, uh, how can we produce our solutions or target states? So given a longer key string, the main idea. So I'm not going to describe this in detail. You can look at the paper, but the main idea is to actually look at shifted key strings. Uh, that uh, so we have a long key string, and we can kind of uh, look at uh, a key stream that starts from the first bit, a key stream that starts from the second bit, and so forth. And, uh, and if we have a L uh, bit key stream that we actually have uh, roughly L, it's, it's not really L, it's a bit smaller, but roughly L shifted key stream produced by L internal states. Okay, and this gives us actually the, the solutions, the multiple solutions that we need for the attack. Again, this, uh, the details are described in the paper. Okay, and uh, one last thing that I want to mention before I conclude is that the attack is actually generic. Uh, it does not actually uh, use any of the properties of the uh, uh, internal uh, stream ciphers that are stored together. Uh, I mean, it can be applied also uh, to if you change the output functions of the stream ciphers arbitrarily, as long as you store their outputs together. So it, the attack is actually generic and it's applicable to all uh, source stream cycle for miners. Okay, so uh, finally, let me conclude. So uh, I described the uh, improved and refined attacks uh, on the ciphers GA1 and GA2. Uh, the techniques that we used uh, are uh, based on, uh, on the new applications of cakes or algorithms to stream cycle cryptanalysis. And in particular, the attack on GA2 is a generic attack that's uh, applicable to all uh, uh, so combiners of uh, uh, four stream ciphers. And finally, I think the main open problem here is that uh, is uh, we want what uh, we would really like to have is a uh, is to uh, to have a really uh, efficient attack for GA two given a, a low amount of data. And uh, I th I think maybe uh, yeah, if we can optimize uh, our attack further, maybe exploiting the structure of the uh, internal structure of the stream cipher, uh, then it would be I think. Uh, really interesting. Okay, so basically that uh, that concludes my talk. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, question, comments? Hello. Uh, Itai, thank you very much for the talk. Um, I wanted to know, you said the GA2 attack is uh, generic. Was it, so is this in contrast to the BDL work or was it already generic there? No, no, the BDL attack actually exploited the low algebraic degree of the output functions of the cipher. So they, they did, I mean, it, it, they exploited the fact that it's an LFSR and uh, the output function is, uh, the filter function is of uh, algebraic degree four. So if you kind of change it to a nonlinear, uh, say, uh, feedback uh, shift register, then this uh, attack will no, no, not longer work, but our attack will work. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. So this is on, yes. 
Um, when you showed the attack on GA2, right, you, you, you sort of searched over the A, B registers and the CD individually. Do you think it would be possible to exploit the inherent weakness between the, the A and C registers, right, that only can take two to the 40 states? You, you together mean, with uh, the, in the GA1 attack? Yeah, well, c could you reuse the, because the, the weakness from GA1 is also inherent in GA2, right? No, that's, uh, it's not. So I, uh, I try to, uh, I, I mentioned this uh, here, maybe uh, I did it quickly, but uh, yeah, if you. Uh, yeah, because the A and C registers are the same there in GA2. No, no, but the initials, uh, but the initials, the, the weakness is in the initialization. It's not in the actual registers. So the weakness is, is in the mapping that uh, takes a seed and uh, maps it to an internal state. And this mapping is different for GA2. So uh, the, the weakness that's present in GA1 does not uh, actually yeah, right. uh, okay. hold for GA2. Okay, thank the you. Weakness yeah. was in the initialization and the initialization of GA2 is, is different from the one of GA1. So it does not have uh, the same weakness. Yeah, so it's, that does not uh, depend on the tap positions of uh, A and C there. Yeah, okay, good, thanks. No, it, it does depend, but it's different. I mean, it's not, it's not the same, uh, it's, not, it's not the same weakness. I mean, it's not, it's not the same uh, function, so it, it doesn't have the same weakness. Uh, yeah, any other question? Sorry? No, any other question, comments, anything? Okay, then let us thanks Peter again. <laughs>